Welcome to the third edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today the with is uh, Dr. Jared Borup at uh, George Mason. So uh, to get us started, Jared, can you tell us a little about yourself and your background in the field? Yeah, so um, I received my PhD at Brigham Young University. Before that, I taught ninth grade social studies for six years. So that's my background. I've always been interested in online learning. Um, at, at Brigham Young University, we started doing some research on interactions with online learning at a cyber charter school. And we've kind of built on that research and, and we've looked at interactions in communities and student support groups at cyber charters or supplemental programs or independent study. Um, and just recently, we've been moving into uh, blended learning. And I, I have a book that I'm using to prop up my computer right now. That is our our book that we recently wrote uh, that's free and open online um, that you can you can go access to. And I'll try to make sure I put that link in the both the blog entry that hosts this as well as the description for the YouTube video uh, for okay. folks. So um, <laughs> yeah. one of the bits of research that you're mentioning has been focusing a lot on uh, this ACE framework and. I know it was originally called the Adolescent Community of Engagement. I know there's a revised name for it now as you've been looking at different communities for it, but I know one of the key parts of that is the engagement that a, a teacher has with a student at a distance or in a, a remote setting. Um, and we've got a lot of teachers right now that are... Um, being thrown into this kind of environment, many of them for the first time, many of them with little to no training, and many of them being asked to do this in very short order. Uh, do you have any advice or guidance that you would uh, give folks that find themselves in this situation? Yeah, so um, it can feel overwhelming. Uh, you need to pay attention to a lot of different things. In the framework that, that you mentioned, um, now it's called the Academic Communities of Engagement. And uh, when we talk about engagement, that's a term that everyone seems to throw around and it, mean, it seems to mean everything and nothing at the same time. But we've tried to define engagement in three ways. There's affective engagement, are students enjoying what they're doing? Behavioral engagement, uh, what are they doing, both online or offline? And then cognitive engagement, what are they learning? And I feel like teachers oftentimes when they're put in a situation like this, they focus a lot on the content, we have to deliver the content and we have to assess their understanding of the content. So I think oftentimes we focus a little too much on cognitive engagement um, without paying enough attention to how students are feeling and uh, what, what supports do they need. Uh, we know that learning is a social activity um, and, and we shouldn't use technology to isolate students. So providing them opportunities and giving them a voice is, is really important. Um, there's lots of tools that are available, even simple check-ins using like Flipgrid or VoiceThread where they can have video and, and speak through video. As a teacher, I think that you'll, one, love to see your students, right? And, and students will love seeing each other, but you can also get a sense for how they're feeling. Um, in, a, in an in-person environment, you can see their demeanor when they walk into the room, but in an online environment, uh, it's hard to see that sometimes. And so using video to kind of help with that can, can, can be a great approach. Many teachers are going straight to synchronous or live video sessions. Um, maybe you've seen lots of parents complaining how their students have been on Zoom for six hours a day, or teachers complaining that they've been on Zoom for six hours a day. Both is not healthy. Um, <laughs> so it's it's important to Remember that, uh, especially if you're in high school, what you're doing, maybe five other teachers are doing. And so just kind of breaking it up a little bit, sometimes you might wanna jump on a Zoom call with whole groups of students or maybe smaller groups of students. Um, but also you can do a lot asynchronously, um, both with the content, but also with your interactions using text, but also uh, video messaging and video recording. And then asking students to, to do that as well. Cool. Now, I know one of the other groups that are stakeholders within the, the framework that you mentioned are parents, and we've got a lot of parents now that have children at home. I know you've got a, uh, several that, that you're probably trying to help in this new environment. So uh, what can parents do to help facilitate 
this whole shift. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, for Christmas, we bought our daughter's uh, whiteboard from Ikea. And uh, we thought it was kind of a, a second thought. We, we didn't think it was going to be a big hit, but now we're using it daily. And, and I think as parents, one thing that students need is structure. And so every morning we have an eight-year-old and a four-year-old. We write out the agenda for the day. This is what we're going to do here, here, here. This is when we're having, having lunch. This is when we're having recess uh and really lay everything out and what's been funny about that is my eight-year-old who loves school um my wife and i started sleeping in some of those nights and she would say oh we got to start now because that's what the agenda is and and yesterday we missed science and so so you can really get them excited especially uh, at the younger age for the older age you'll be pulling them out of bed but but it, it's important to kind of maintain that structure and some schools are going to be Further along with this and others, I, I know that um, our school, we took a, an extended break uh, that was tacked on the end of spring break where teachers are preparing. So for now, we haven't received anything from our schools, which is completely understandable. Um, but we found lots of resources online. Uh, oftentimes, a lot of these tools are offering free accounts, even full courses for children. Um, or maybe some some educational math games or things like that, where would typically be behind a paywall. Now is free. Um, another thing that's great is there have been these active uh, streaming lessons online that have been great. Like Mo Williams, who did "Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus" or or some of those other things. Um, he has a, a daily lunch with Mo Williams, where he he just draws. It's just him in his desk and he's like drawing and he's funny. And I've become like a huge Mo Williams fan. So, so, and lots of YouTuber, YouTubers that your kids might be aware of in the educational space, they're doing live lessons. So a lot of it is just finding and curating resources for your students and then guiding them through that and structuring their day is gonna be really important. Cool, well, thank you very much, Jared. So this has been another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning, today with Dr. Jared Borup. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh.